Islamic history brings remarkable figures who dedicated themselves to spreading their faith worldwide. The impactful leadership and unwavering commitment crafted inspiring chapters in history. These leaders who committed their lives, wealth and soul to the religion stand as enduring symbols of the sacrifices made for their faith. Among these stalwarts, Aslamah ibn Abd al-Malik distinguishes himself as a prominent military leader who tirelessly battled against the Romans and the Byzantine Empire for over three decades. A skillful siege of Constantinople garnered the respect of historians, leading some to compare him to the military leader Khalid bin Walid. His bravery, numerous victories and regular invasions took him across various nations. Stay tuned as we well delve into the life of one of Islam's greatest military figures. Aslam Ayman Abdul Malik was born in 685 in Damascus. He was part of the Umayyad and Quraysh tribe and his father, Caliph Abdul Malik, played a significant role in the establishment of the Umayyad Caliphate. Through his grandfather, Aslam was related to Prophet Muhammad. His mother was a slave girl and his father, Abdul Malik, had married several women who was free and enslaved. Abdul Malik, the Caliph and Aslam's father, took a keen interest in his children's upbringing. He aimed to instill in them noble characteristics and virtues and chose for them righteous methods who taught them the Quran, Hadith, Ethics and Lamas. He was adamant about his children receiving a holistic Islamic education. The Caliph Abdul Malik used to advise his mentors, saying, I have chosen you to discipline my children. I have made you my eyes over them and my trustees. Strive in their discipline and heed my advice concerning their faith. Teach them the Book of Allah and to memorize it and guide them to what Allah has ordained as lawful and unlawful until they understand it. Acquaint them with the best of morals and the most comprehensive manners. Introduce them to the purest of poetry and the most truthful of hadith. Give them a way of the company of women, the weak-minded and the foolish. Make them fear me and discipline them in my absence. Do not move them from one silence to another until they understand it, for coming words in the air is confusing to the understanding. And I ask Allah for his success and rectitude. Aslam was thus raised in an environment that nurtured his development into a statesman and future military leader. Maslam Ayman Abdul Malik was a deeply intellectual and brave individual, molded by a robust upbringing. His vast cultural and academic knowledge set him apart, as is his love for literature and poetry. His eloquence and linguistic prowess was impressive, and he had a fervent passion for learning. Notably, he was an articulate poet and a skilled orator. In addition, Maslam Ayman Abdul Malik was an innovative and exceptional military leader, known for his swift and accurate decision making. He was revered as a valiant knight and a fearless warrior, displaying formidable faithlessness and achieving numerous victories. His cunning intellect, lofty ambitions, and tenacious willpower were among his defining traits. He was also benevolent and generous, especially towards the less fortunate, displaying compassion and kindness. His piety and nobility distinguished him among the Beni Umayya and Quraysh, marking him as a standout figure. Maslam ibn Abdul Malik was fearless, never shrinking back from his foes. Was, this was evident during the conquest of Amorim, where the ferocity of battle reached its peak as his forces clashed with the Roman army. Amidst the chaos, Maslam displayed exceptional courage by dismounting from his horse to join his troops in a thick of battle. This fierce combat was unlike anything experienced before. In regard to Maslama, it was famously said, there was no son of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan who surpassed Maslama in thoughtfulness, intelligence, courage, generosity of spirit, and open handedness. Maslama joined the Islamic army at an early age, proving his combat efficiency and leadership capabilities. He started his military conquest during the caliphate of his father against the Romans and his war lasted for over 35 years. These wars began early as the Umayyad caliphs paid great attention to the front of the Romans as they enabled the Levant, the center of the Islamic caliphate. The Roman Empire was still strong and posed a threat to the Islamic state. The Umayyad caliphs thought of a distinguished, serious commander to take up fighting the Romans on the northern front. The choice fell on Muslims. In the year 708, while Maslam bin Abdul Malik was in the South Caucasus, the Byzantines began to mobilize their troops and amassed a large army intending to launch a surprise attack on the Muslims and seize control of Syria from the Caliphate. Upon receiving this news, Caliph Abdul Malik gathered the people of Syria in the Grand Mosque. Ascending the pulpit, 
he addressed them saying, People, the enemy has become aggressive towards you, has become ambitious. They look down upon you because you have abandoned your commitment to obey Allah and have become indifferent towards his commands, show reluctance in striving the path of Allah. Now I have decided to dispatch you to the Byzantine lands. What do you have to say about this? This speech was intended to rally the Muslims to fight against the Byzantines throughout the assault and defend the caliphate. The people responded with readiness for jihad and defense of the lands, resolutely committing to this cause. Caliph Abdul Malik then had summoned his governors to bring the troops and call upon his brother Muhammad bin Marwan and his son Maslam. When the fighters and soldiers from all corners arrived, Abdul Malik stood amongst them, addressing them. I command Maslam bin Abdul Malik to lead you. Listen and obey his orders so that you may be guided and successful. If he is martyred, the commander after him will be Muhammad bin Khalid bin Walid al Makhzum. If he is martyred, the commander after him will be Muhammad bin Abdul Aziz. Ajab bin Haywa has been appointed to manage this police, as he will be a trustworthy custodian for Maslama and for all of you. Then, turning to Maslama, he said, Son, I have appointed you to lead this son. Go forth and confront Aliu, the dog of Byzantines. Be kind to the Muslims, be gentle with them, and keep your promises. Avoid becoming a proud, arrogant tyrant. Abdul Malik then advised his son, saying, Son, I have chosen you for this responsibility and honored you with this honor. I have made it a source of honor and a legacy for you. I have trust in Allah and seek his assistance. Depend on him alone, for he is a sufficient protector and help. Don't be intimidated by the numbers of the Romans. Allah bless and exalted will, through his grace, destroy them and strike their faces. After Abdul Malik had completed the army, he called Maslama to bid him farewell. He hugged him, kissed him on his forehead and said, Peace be upon you, my son, the light of my eyes and the fruit of my heart. My intuition tells me that this may be the last time I see you and the last time you see me. Under the leadership chief of Maslama, the army set forth. A special unit composed of elite warriors was formed and equipped with the finest weaponry and gear. The strongest fighters were appointed to undertake the most complex military tasks. The army advanced towards Amorium, a Byzantine army led by Recep confronted them. The first battle took place between the two armies, ending with a victory for the Muslims and the death of Recep. When the news of the Muslims' victory reached Shimon, the ruler of Amorium, he marched his army to meet the Muslim forces. The two armies clashed in a fierce battle, resulting in another victory for the Muslims. Shimon was killed, the Byzantines were defeated. The Muslim army quickly advanced to the gates of Amorium and forcefully entered the city killing its fighters and seizing its possession and wealth. The conquest of Constantinople had been a dream and a goal for Muslims. When Caliph Suleiman ibn Abd al-Malik assumed the Caliphate, his primary objectives was the capture of Constantinople. He entrusted Maslama with this monumental task. This occurred in the year 717 when a large army was assembled for this battle. Soldiers were rallied from various corners of the Caliphate, from Egypt to the Levant, North Africa and other regions. The hadith of Prophet Muhammad, which spoke of the virtue of conquering Constantinople and the virtue of the army that conquered it, spurred the caliphs and the leaders to seek this honor. Maslama marched with his army, totaling 120,000 fighters towards Constantinople. The Sunan man him and the Malik had commanded him to lay siege to the city until he was captured. As the army approached the capital of the Romans, Maslama orders his soldiers to conserve the food, pitch their tents, and cultivate the land. The Romans sent a message to Maslama, offering him to pay him a dinar per head, but he refused. He then besieged Constantinople, closed off its routes leading to it, and even rejects offers of tributes from the inhabitants. He insisted on forcibly taking the city and set up massive catapults against it. However, the fortification of the city walls prevented his advance. During the siege of Constantinople, Caliph Suleiman ibn Abdul Malik passed away. His successor, Caliph Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, ushered in a new face in the life of the Islamic State, particularly in its foreign policy. He immediately sent a letter to Maslama ordering him to draw his forces. With this, Maslama withdrew his arm. Even though they didn't achieve their goal, they succeeded in exhausting the Roman Empire and halting its aggressive invasions against the Islamic State. After the siege, Maslama conducted numerous wars and raids, many of which ended in victory for the Muslim army.
The great commander Maslami Abdel Malik died in 738 at the age of 53. Maslami had spent his life fighting, waging wars against the Romans and the Byzantine Empire. Historians have not mentioned the cause of Maslami's death or any possible illness that he might have had. Thus, in the life of a hero among Muslim leaders whose conquests reached the heart of Europe and spread Islam to many countries. He played a significant role in leading many people to embrace Islam. From the biography of Maslam Ayman Abdel Malik, several life lessons can be derived that are relevant to a wide range of situations. Number 1. Perseverance in the face of challenges Despite the many obstacles and challenges Maslam encountered, such as the fortified walls of Constantinople, he remained steadfast and committed to his mission. This teaches us that we should not be discouraged when we face difficulties in our endeavors. Instead, we should view these challenges as opportunities for growth and improvement. Number 2. Dedication to a greater cause Maslam has spent his life in service to a greater cause, the expansion and defense of the Islamic State. This demonstrates the power of having a purpose or cause that is larger than oneself. Such a purpose can motivate and inspire us to perform at our best. Number 3. Leadership and strategic thinking. As a military leader, Maslama demonstrated exceptional strategic thinking and leadership skills. He understood the importance of resource management as seen when he instructed his soldiers to conserve food and cultivate the land during the siege. This shows the importance of good leadership and strategic thinking in any endeavor, whether it's a military campaign or a business project. Number 4. Acceptance of change. When Caliph Omar ibn Abdul Aziz ordered the withdrawal from Constantinople, Maslam obeyed even though it meant abandoning his goal. This teaches us that sometimes, due to circumstances beyond our control, we might need to adapt our plans or accept changes. The ability to adapt to changing situations is a valuable skill in all aspects of life. Number 5. Legacy and Impact Maslama left a legacy that was remembered and admired by generations. His efforts contributed to the expansion of the Islamic State and helped spread Islam in various regions. This shows that our actions and deeds can have a far-reaching impact, even beyond our lifetime. It serves as a reminder that we should strive to leave a positive legacy and make a meaningful impact in our lives.